Hello and welcome to the presentation of our latest paper, Has India Emerged? Business Cycle Stylized Facts from a Transitioning Economy. Before we delve into the main paper, I would first like to motivate the work. There is a substantial literature documenting the business cycle properties of developed economies. In recent decades, there is a fresh wave of interest in documenting the business cycle features of emerging economies and presenting a comparison of the business cycle properties of developed and emerging economies. While there are a number of interesting papers in this field, there is an interesting critical dimension to this work which is still relatively unexplored, which is that in emerging economies in recent decades, there is a significant structural transformation taking place. What has been the response of the business cycle properties to the changes in the policy environment and to the uh, structural transformation is the critical question that we ask in this paper. We examine this question in the Indian context, which has underwent st significant structural transformation in the latest two decades. So the question is, why study India? India presents an interesting case study of an economy that underwent significant structural transformation in the last two decades. There were three main elements of change. First is the move away from a planned, closed economy to a market-determined, open economy. Another element of change has been the decline in financial repression. Also, India has significantly opened up to trade and financial flows, resulting in significant trade liberalization. We investigate the change in the nature of business cycle in response to structural transformation induced by the changes in the policy environment. Before we delve into the India study, we first present a brief overview of the literature in this field. This table is extracted from the classic work by Agwar and Gopinath and this table presents a comparison of the business cycle properties of developed and emerging economies. We find that there are some important differences in the business cycle features. First, the emerging economy's output volatility is high and much higher as compared to developed economies. In emerging economies, the volatility is 2.74 for output, while for uh, the developed economies, the volatility is 1.34. Also, if we look at the relative standard deviation of private consumption, we find that in emerging economies, the relative standard deviation is greater than 1, while for developed economies, it is less than 1. Another important difference relates to the cyclicality of trade balance. While trade balance is mildly counter-cyclical in developed economies, it is significantly highly counter-cyclical in emerging economies. In addition to these basic differences in the business cycle features, we also find that there are other differences related to investment, imports, and exchange rate related to developed and developing economies. In developed economies, investment is highly pro-cyclical and it co-moves with output. While in developing economies, we do not find a consistent relation between investment and output. Same relates to imports. Imports are highly pro-cyclical in developed economies, while we do not see a consistent relation between imports and output in developing economies. Also, if we look at government expenditure, it is counter-cyclical in developed economies, while there is no consistent relation between government expenditure and output in developing economies. So we see that there are some uh, basic differences in the business cycle features of developed and emerging economies. What are the reasons for the differences in the business cycle features of developed and emerging economies? A number of papers have tried to explain these business cycle differences in the features of developed and emerging economies. The important contribution in this field is by Agwar and Gopinath's paper on emerging economy business cycle. According to the authors, it is the differences in the nature of shocks uh, that explain the business cycle uh, features of developed and emerging economies. According to the authors, in developed economies, the changes are predominantly dominated by transitory productivity shocks. While since emerging economies are characterized by frequent regime switches, shocks to trend growth are the primary sources of fluctuations. 
in emerging economies. These differences in the nature of shocks explain the differences in the business cycle features of developed and emerging economies. In addition to this uh, explanation, there are other reasons advocated by uh, a number of papers. According to Neumeier and Perry, the differences in the business cycle features of developed and emerging economies is attributed to changes in the real foreign interest rate. In, emerge, in an emerging economy setting, the firms require working capital. Their working capital requirement is financed through foreign borrowing. So if the foreign interest rate is high, their demand for working capital, primarily their demand for labor, falls. As a result, the employment falls and output falls. So if the interest rate is high, there will be business cycle downturn in, in emerging economies. In addition to the domestic financial market friction and foreign interest rate shock explanation given by Numair and Perry, Calvo argues that it is the sudden stops of capital flows that documents the business cycle that explains the business cycle fluctuations in developed and emerging economies. With this basic overview of literature, we now turn to studying the business cycle uh, features of Indian economy and the changes therein from the pre to post reform period. For our study, we take the annual data from 1950 to 2010. To examine the business cycle features of pre and post reform period, we divide our data into two phases, the pre reform phase from 1951 to 2010 and the post reform phase from, 1950, from 1992 to 2009. We use the standard Hotwick Prescott filter to detrain the series and the detrained component of the series is then used to study the business cycle properties of volatility, co-movement and persistence. So this table documents the main findings of our paper. In this paper we have compared the pre and post reform period business cycle properties of standard deviation, relative standard deviation, correlation and persistence. So if we look at the real GDP, we find that the standard deviation of real GDP has declined from 2.13 to 1.78 in the post reform period. While if we look at non-agri GDP, the standard deviation has actually increased from 1.69 to 1.81. Private consumption is again volatile, the relative standard deviation being increasing to more than one in the post reform period. Now we turn to some correlation numbers. Interestingly, we find that investment becomes highly pro-cyclical in the post-reform period. Investment pro-cyclicality increases from 0.22 to 0.77 in the post-reform period. Imports are highly acyclical in the pre-reform period, while they turn to be pro-cyclical in the post-reform period. Also, if we look at the nominal exchange rate, it is acyclical in the pre-reform period, while it turns counter-cyclical in the post-reform period. This is indicative of an emergence of flexible exchange rate regime in the post reform period where in good times the exchange rate falls and in bad times the exchange rate rises. So if we were to summarize the changes, what we find is that the volatility of macroeconomic variables has declined although the numbers still remain high. Consistent with the other similarly placed literature on emerging economies, we, we see that the relative standard deviation of private consumption has increased in the post reform period. On co-movement and persistence, we find that the Indian business cycle looks more closer to developed economies. As we can see that investment becomes highly pro-cyclical, imports also become pro-cyclical, exchange rate becomes counter-cyclical. All these features indicate that the Indian business cycle looks more similar to developed economies in the post reform period. Now, what explains these changes in the Indian business cycle environment? Are these changes driven by good luck hypothesis? Are these changes driven by better policies? We investigate these claims. For good luck hypothesis, we examine the uh, volatility of two possible candidates. We look at the uh, volatility of WPI fuel and Brent crude oil and we find that in the post reform period the standard deviation of WPI fuel actually increases. Same is the case with Brent crude oil price. So if we 
If we look at good luck hypothesis, which is a reduction in the variance of exogenous shocks, we do not see, we do not find the evidence of good luck hypothesis explaining the business cycle properties in, for the Indian scenario. Also productivity shocks, if we look at productivity uh, shocks volatility in the pre and post reform period, we find that in post reform period the volatility has actually increased. So in these plots we can see that in the post reform period the volatility of total factor productivity and the volatility of WPI fuel has actually increased. So what we can claim from our analysis is that good luck hypothesis is not the main factor explaining the business cycle fluctuations and explaining the differences in the business cycle properties from pre to post reform period. Also if we look at better policies, when do we say that better policies would account for the business cycle changes? Better policies would imply less volatile and more counter cyclical fiscal and monetary policies so that they can play a macro stabilization role. But in the Indian context, we do not see evidence of either less volatile fiscal and monetary policies or counter cyclical fiscal and monetary policies. Our analysis show that fiscal and monetary policies are pro cyclical and they are volatile in the post reform period. Hence, we claim that good policies are also not responsible for the changes in the business cycle fluctuations. So then what explains the changes in the business cycle properties from pre to post reform period? According to our analysis, there are three key factors that explain the business cycle properties, the changes in the business cycle properties. The first main factor is the decline in the share of agriculture. As we can see in this graph, there is a consistent decline in the share of agriculture to GDP from 1950s onwards. Also, if we look at the composition of GDP, the proportion of agriculture to GDP has significantly declined from 53% in 1951 to 14.6% in 2009. This graph and this table indicates that agriculture's contribution to GDP has declined which shows that monsoon shocks, which is an important factor driving volatility in macro variables, matter less for the Indian economy. The other important factor that could explain the changes in the business cycle properties is the sharp integration of India, Indian economy on both trade and financial account. As India has sharply integrated with trade and financial account, we could we see that Though the macro variables has, the volatility of macro variables has registered a decline, they are still quite high. This graph shows that the gross flows on current and capital account as a person to GDP has significantly increased from around 20% in 1950s to 60% each for gross flows on current and capital account in 2009. Another important factor that explains the changes in the business cycle properties from pre to post reform period is the interplay of investment and inventory fluctuations. In the pre reform period, there were consistent significant restrictions on capacity creation. As a result, the main source of investment was driven by planned government investment, public sector investment, which did not show any cyclical fluctuations. In the post reform period, there are significant reductions in capacity uh, in the constraints on capacity creation as a result with eased restrictions and a more conducive environment for investment we find that the share of investment as a person to gdp has gone up from around 13% in 1950s to 35% in 2019 this is also visible if you look at the uh, private corporates uh, gross capital formation as a person to GDP. With significant reductions in cap uh, constraints on capacity creation, what we find is that the private sector gross capital, uh, gross capital formation sees visible fluctuations and these fluctuations are co-moving with the business cycle. So as we can see from 1990s onwards, in the mid-1990s when Indian economy witnessed a business cycle boom, we find that the private corporate gross capital formation also rises. 
Then in beginning of 2000s, around 2001-2002, there was a downturn and which is also visible in the private corporate gross capital formation. Since then, there has been a recovery before the advent of the global financial crisis in 2008-9, which caused a dip in the private sector gross capital formation. So what we see is an emergence of conventional business cycle through the interplay of investment inventory fluctuation in the Indian economy. And that is a major factor that explains the changes in the business cycle properties from pre to post reform period. Now we move on to a series of robustness checks to examine the validity of our findings. We do four kinds of robustness checks. First, we check for the statistical significance of the difference in correlation from the pre to post reform period. We also compare our annual data findings with quarterly data, which is available from 1999 onwards. We also change the filter from Hodrick Prescott to Baxter King to examine whether there is a significant change in the conclusions. And also we redefine the sample period. So in this uh, robustness check, in place of the pre-reform period taken from 1951, we take the pre-reform period from 1971 onwards. So when we compare and test for the statistically significant differences in correlation, we find that for those variables who are, which are driving the business cycle changes from pre to post reform period, their correlation differences between pre to post reform are highly statistically significant. As can be seen for investment, the difference in correlation is highly significant. Also for imports, the difference in correlation from pre to post reform period is highly significant. For net exports, it is highly significant. For the monetary variables and for inflation, also we find that the difference in correlation between from pre to post reform period is highly uh, significant. Also, if we look at quarterly data, which is available from 99 onwards, our findings are consistent with the findings for the annual data. We find, again, if you look at the relative standard deviation, the private consumption uh, standard deviation is more than one. Investment is pro-cyclical with the correlation number is 0.69. Imports is significantly pro-cyclical with the number being 0.45. So in general, we find that our quarterly analysis is the, the, the results from quarterly analysis are matching with the results from the annual analysis. Also, if we change the uh, filter from Hodrick Prescott to Baxter King filter, we find that our analysis and our findings are broadly similar with the Hodrick Prescott filter. If we redefine the sample period, also we find that our findings are broadly similar with the findings of our original sample period, which is from 1950 to 1991 for the pre-reform period. So in conclusion, we find that we are uh, documenting the business cycle properties of uh, Indian economy from pre to post reform period. What we find is that although the volatility of macroeconomic variables has declined in the post reform period, it is still high and similar to other emerging economies. The interesting uh, finding is for the relative consumption volatility, which it has actually increased in the post reform period. On correlation and persistence, the Indian business cycle looks more similar to the developed economies. Also, we find evidence to support that the, these changes are not driven by good luck hypothesis or by better policies. In fact, these are driven by the changes in structural transformation due to better market-oriented reforms. Thank you.